Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. We'll start the meeting in just a moment. As you see, we're missing my council members, so give us a half a second.
and thank the city of Euless and Euless Police Department for having such a fine young man uh, serve this community. Uh, great police officer, uh, can't say enough about that, but I think it's true passion lies with his wife and his, and his family, and uh, we're so happy that they're here, here with him. I think she's the one that made sure he came to, to Texas. Uh, she got him here, and then once he got here, he made a phone call back, and I think we've hired three of his buddies since then, and uh, they're all possibly a fourth, possibly a fourth, and uh, uh, they're just all just like him, cut from the same mold of uh, true servants, people who come every day to serve the community and not serve themselves. Uh, he's <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, right. yeah, that's what we like. We like that. So what I would say is congratulations. So very proud of you.
And also, if you know anybody in the community that does not have a smoke detector in their home, can't afford one, whatever the case may be, even needs assistance changing out the battery for the smoke detector or detectors in their home, you contact the Euless Fire Department and we will take care of you. Come out, no charge, and make sure we get you squared away so you're safe at your home. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda items and I'll ask Ms. Getchell to briefly touch on these. Mayor and Council, item number three is to consider authorizing the purchase of carpet for the Texas Star Golf Course and Conference Center from Vector Concepts through the Buy Board Cooperative <coughs> Purchasing Program. And the estimated cost of this purchase is $60,878.14, which is below our budget. <coughs> Item number four is to consider the purchase of library print and multimedia materials through the State of Texas Co-op Program. And the materials may be purchased from any of the approved vendors on this contract. Item number five is to consider resolution number 14, 1442, authorizing a local project advance funding agreement with the state of Texas through the Department of Transportation. This funding will provide a grant in the amount of $112,000 for landscape beautification at State Highway 183 and Bear Creek Parkway. Item number six is to consider approval of the city council minutes of September the 9th, 2014. Thank you very much. Council, if there are no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I move approval. Second. Thank you. The motion was made by Council Member Sinifrud and seconded by Council Member Bynum. And at this time, please cast your votes. The motion passes. Item number seven is to consider authorizing the mayor to execute an interlocal agreement with the city of Collierville. Mm -hmm regarding access to and the use of heritage avenue. Any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. Thank you. The motion was made by Council Member Pine and seconded by Council Member Tompkins. This time, please cast your votes. The motion passes. Item number eight is to consider the first and final reading of ordinance number 2043, amending the City of Lewis Code of Ordinances, chapter 90, chapters 90 through 94, and section 90 through 96. Chief Brown, can you very quickly touch on it? Thank you. Mayor, Council, what we're asking to do is to uh, change some words in the requirements within the uh, ordinance. Right now we have a uh, ordinance reads that you cannot pull a, a non-consent towed vehicle out of the city more than three miles. And we want to expand that to a 15 mile radius. And there is some uh, restrictions in there for a drop fee. Uh, the city has set it at $100. And what we really want to do is just make that compliant with the, uh, with the state statutes set forth by uh, Texas Department of License and Regulation, PDLR, uh, and that way we'll tie it to that. And if that rate goes up or down, we'll tie it to the state and we don't have to come back and amend the ordinance. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this basically cleans up a few parts in one of our ordinances that need a little clarification and smoothing out. So I'll ask council what's your pleasure. Mayor, I move approval. Thank you. Mayor, I'll second. Thank you. The motion was made by Councilmember Tompkins and seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Eilenfeld. Please pass your votes. The motion passes. Item number nine is to consider a request for a temporary use permit number 14-08-CC. Mr. Collins, can you say a couple of quick words? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> St. John the Baptist Greek Orthodox Church is again here before you as they do annually to hold their Greek food festival, a very, very important fundraiser for their church community. The dates that this event will take place are identified 
in your agenda communication, they will include their typical Thursday evening festivity beginning on October the 10th and concluding Sunday afternoon on October the 12th. Uh, several representatives, Harry and George, are here from the church and would be able to respond to any specific questions that you have. Thank you. <clears throat> we thank you for coming back again. We do know that it is a wonderful event and we've done some work, some pre-planning every year and every year it gets a little bit better. So Council, what's your pleasure? May I move approval? Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. The motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Island and seconded by Councilmember Price. Please cast your votes. The motion passes and we'll see you all there for some really good food. Item number 10 is to hold a public hearing regarding plan development 14-02 PD and consider first and final reading of ordinance number 2040. At this time, we'll open the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mayor. The applicant is Don Dykstra representing Bloomfield Homes. The subject property <coughs> is on the east side of Main Street down East Whitener. The maps that are in the overhead will depict it in two different maps. One is the location map that is in red stripe squared area. It is between the Spring Valley Apartments and the Knob Hill Mobile Home Park to the east. This property is currently zoned to permit by right duplexes. The developer instead is proposing a 19 lot subdivision. The minimum lot size would be 5,500 square feet with the average approaching 6,400 square feet. As part of the over, overall site development, there would be a masonry screening wall that would represent a dolled up entryway feature off of the Swipner. What is framed in green would depict a fence replacement that they would intend to construct with the development that would be a stained wood on, with metal posts uh, that again would be constructed as part of the overall development. As is the case with the various planned developments that have come before you for your consideration from Bloomfield, there are architectural design standards that are developed and would be required as part of the planned development plan development ordinance. Um, I know that Mr. Dykstra, as part of his presentation, uh, will highlight what some of those architectural design features are. Thank you. At this time, I'll ask if there are any pro comments. Mr. Dykstra, would you like to say a few words? Uh, Don Dykstra, our office in Mulis is at 100 Ridgewood Drive, 76039. Uh, first, you know, Mayor, Council Member, staff, we always excited to come here and we're uh, we always are excited to find another you know gym that's somewhere in Euless that there's an opportunity to build houses on because people keep telling us there's no land left but uh, we're people are finding us and we really just appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'll try to be real quick with the presentation. This this track is probably a lot of you know is, is a little bit challenging, it's real tight. It sits between the mobile home park and the apartment house. So there's one that's been left Know, maybe 30, 40 years has been there, so um, we work quite a bit with staff to try to figure out how to get something to fit in. We had designed a, a new set of product that was really primarily geared towards millennials, which is a little bit shallower, which is going to help work on this site. We're going to do from 1,700 feet to about 3,000 feet. All these pictures are actual pictures of houses and subdivisions, and they represent what we would do in the neighborhood. My guardian nice enough to through the side. Um, believe me, this is um, around the corner from the Cannon Gardens property. So for us, these are two sites that maybe would be too small normally for a, a builder to work on, but because of the proximity, uh, we believe they will work well for us. Not trying to move back there. Okay. There's uh, perimeter walls. You talked about we'll do masonry with stone columns, similar to uh, what we've done before. These are actual elevations of this product. Um, what we did that's different on the interior for you is it's the um, flat panel cabinets now. It's got the uh, chrome features. We have this kind of wall of cabinets. We will have a standard granite that we do everywhere, 42 inch cabinets. So it will be a, a good look, but it's a little more contemporary, the idea being to uh, appeal to um, young families. 
got the, the Vanna hoods. And it will have all the energy features, 16 sear, um, and the final windows, all the stuff we do, full irrigation, full landscaping. And we believe it will be uh, really nice in an area of town that there have not been a lot of homes built recently. So we're excited to go. Thank you very Take much. Any questions? Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Are there any other pro comments? If not, do we have any O comments? At this time, we'll close the public hearing. And council, no questions, comments? We'll entertain a motion. I hear a approval and make a comment that, it's, as uh, Don was just saying, tells you what a great city you have and what a great community you have when every square corner that you can find to put a really nice house in, somebody wants to build one there, and it'll probably be sold right after it's built. Or before. Or before. <clears throat> second. Thank you. The motion was made by Council Member Sinniford and seconded by Council Member Bynum. Please cast your votes. The motion passes. Item number 11 is to hold a public hearing regarding plan development 14-03-PD and consider the first and final reading of ordinance number 2042. Thank you, Mr. Collins. We'll open the public hearing. Thank you very much, Mayor. Bloomfield Homes is the applicant for this proposed development as well. It is located at 1804 North Main Street. We are on the east side of Main Street. Fountain Park would be located to the north. Woodland subdivision would be located to the south. The current zoning on this property is R1, so it would permit by right uh, the development of single family homes built to R1 development standards. Don Dykstra is the developer instead is proposing a planned development for this property. Um, it would be a cul-de-sac. He would to lay out eight individual lots. Uh, the smallest lot in the cul-de-sac area to the east would be a little bit over 6,000 square feet, but the remainder of the lots would exceed 9,000 square feet. A couple of design features associated with the site development itself. Uh, to the rear of the lots, you are going to have a 20-foot minimum setback, and as you get to the east, uh, particularly with those lots that are located immediately on the cul-de-sac, you're going to have a 15-foot setback. What that will <coughs> enable them to do as part of the site development is there's some vegetation and trees that exist along that southern property line that um, if you read some of the minutes from the PNZ public hearing, you heard from some interested parties that uh, they kind of like that tree cover and what this additional um, width of this will enable them to do is to preserve as many of those trees as possible. Uh, the front setbacks are gonna average between 25 feet and 20 feet. Again, as you get uh, around that cul-de-sac, that front setback is going to narrow. Um, this obviously is a single loaded uh, subdivision. The northern portion that's depicted in green will be preserved as open space. Uh, that area will go as you move from east to west uh, will be as much as uh, 30 feet in width and will narrow down uh, to a little less than 15 feet. Again, being able to preserve that band um, of open space would enable the preservation of some trees in that area. Again, referencing some of the minutes from the Planning and Zoning Commission from some interested property owners that live to the north. They were concerned about the preservation of the trees. In response to the a circumstance in which some of those trees would be removed, the developer had agreed as part of the condition of the ordinance to have at least 23 inch caliper trees. A portion of those 20 trees can be counted if they preserve existing trees that are in there. But after it's all said and done with, there will be a minimum of 20, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, three inch caliper or greater trees that will um, be located in that area. Around the perimeter um, of there, they would be constructing a new wood fence uh, on metal posts. Uh, he's agreed to an eight foot tall uh, fence. Part of the final determination of that height of the fence will be based on 
uh, the cooperation with the adjacent property owners in the event that this would be passed, he will be working with each individual property owner um, to try to get some uniformity to that fence. Um, we've gone over the tree preservation, the setbacks. Um, in addition, I did I did fail to mention the, uh, the the minimum of two trees per rear yard that are minimum of three inch. Again, with the same intent to uh, maintain as much of that vegetation that's there currently and if it has to be removed during the site development they will be replaced um, i have depicted this graphic for y'all during the pre-session that with the surrounding subdivisions we wanted to give you a flavor that these homes would likely be two stories that will be constructed what are the homes immediately adjacent to it in the existing subdivisions What's depicted in the blue shade are existing two-story homes. And on the Fountain Park subdivision, again, that's located to the north and to the east, there are two-story homes that we had indicated in that blue shade, but none of these on the second floor have any rear-facing windows. And again, as part of Mr. Dykstra's presentation, he's going to highlight some of the architectural design features that have been incorporated into the plan development ordinance. Thank you. Again, we'll ask for Mr. Proponent and Mr. Dykstra. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, one of the things we did that I think was a little unique with the subdivision is we buried the width of the lot, which is going to let us bring in a wider variety of uh, floor plans. So I think it will have a very custom feel. This is an example of a house that we'd be able to build here where it's got a Two garage openings that face to the side, and one that comes front, which will give it a different look from anything we've built in the US so far. Um, perimeter walls will be the same. Um, we've done quite a few new elevations, as a, uh, or would be what part of the house would look as a part of our gateway planning. Those would also come into here. These are again exact houses that we would build, build on this call to that. One of the things that um, we talk about quite a bit is, is windows, and I said more windows equals more light. Our typical house average is about 30 windows versus the most production motors will run about 15, <coughs> you know, twice as much light. The features, I think most of you are familiar with what we're doing, but it would, it would be the same. <coughs> and that's all I got, if you've got any questions. Any questions, counsel? Mr. Dykstra, approximately what square footage and approximately what price point? Um, we agree on a 20, uh, or what we're proposing is a 2,200 foot minimum that would go up to a little over 4,000 feet. Uh, price points are always hard to project. I can tell you that in, in Gateway right now, I think we've sold six houses and we're averaging something like 450,000. Um, I would, we could get higher here just because we, I think we've got four lots that are right around 10,000 square feet, which are going to be a, a considered a very big lot for this close in. I would have to say somewhere 300 to 500, which I know is a very broad range, but it's going to depend a lot on what the homeowners want, and we're going to try to accommodate you know, as many options and features as they would like. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, counsel? Mr. Lost there as well, huge pecans. 
And that was sad to see, but in its place, beautiful homes and nice new neighbors. This project really is 10 years in the making. My late husband, Steve, is a home remodeler with very, very, very particular standards. He's a perfectionist. And his plan was to have the property developed into seven or eight homes and called that. And actually, at least 10 years ago, he met with Mike Hawkins and showed him the sketches for the development. Plans changed, like got the way. My um, husband was diagnosed with cancer, and after a year and a half of fight, um, lost the battle. So my um, son and my daughter, Christine, and son James, both two graduates, helped me to survive and take care of the property with friends and family. Um, the trees were beautiful, although I can count on top of my head at least 20 that have succumbed to disease, age, or drought over the last few years. And I brag that I have a $2,200 stump for one of those trees that dropped huge huge branches. And it would have been a $4,400 stump had I taken the first bed. The house is known to longtime residents as the Cobra House. It was built by the Cobra family who bought it from Mrs. Cobra, and we um, hope that she'll be able to view it in the next few weeks before the um, house is removed to have beautiful, beautiful homes in this place. When I saw what Don Dykstra and William Bill Cummings had done with Ms. McCormick's property, I knew what the right thing to do was. I approached Bloomfield and asked if they would be willing to develop the property. And to see those beautiful, beautiful homes on that piece of property would give our family such peace and comfort and closure. So we're delighted when we found out their name, the development group at River Park and the Street River Court in honor of our family and my late husband. We were just so, so honored and thrilled. So on behalf of the entire group family, I ask you to support this project. Thank you, Brenda, for sharing with us in this group. We really appreciate that. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? At this time, we'll close the public hearing, and I'll ask counsel if you have any questions or comments. Mayor, I move approval. Thank you. Uh, I'll second. I just had a comment. I'll do I'll second. Okay. Thank you. The motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Eilenfeld and seconded by Council Member Tompkins. At this time, please cast your votes. The motion passes, Mr. Tompkins. I, I just wanted to appreciate the process that went about this. Uh, we, have, I attended the planning <coughs> and zoning commission meeting um, with several of the neighbors, and uh, I appreciate the time you spent with with everybody in Mr. Dykstra to make sure everything was complete and satisfactory with our citizens. Uh, and again, it's just another quality product, but I, I, I appreciate the process that took to get here. Thank you. I would also like to thank Bloomfield Homes. If any of you have driven through different uh, areas where Bloomfield is building something, you see that the quality, not only is it the quality of their product excellent, but their building sites are incredibly clean. There's not piles of stuff that's left in at the end before the day before closing. Um, every day, sometimes several times a day, things are picked up and cleaned up. They build a good product, and we're delighted to have you as a neighbor. Thank you, Mr. Dyson. We'll be our last public hearing this evening. It'll be for specific use permit number 14-11-SUP. And consider first the final reading of ordinance number 2041. Open the public hearing and ask this call. Thank you very much, Mayor. The subject property is located at 1105 Pamela Drive on property that's zoned I-2 Heavy Industrial. You can see on the maps depicted in the red hash marks the specific location of this proposed use. Mr. Randy Childers is the applicant representing ABC Auto Credit. He is requesting a specific use permit for internet auto, net, internet auto sales of vehicles to occupy approximately 7,000 square feet of lease space for office space and an interior storage of vehicles for sale. All of the sales of the vehicles would be made online with the interior lease space utilized as storage for the vehicle inventory. No vehicles will be stored exterior, exterior to the lease space. No mechanical work will be performed on the vehicles. The operation of the business would be from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Listed in your agenda communication is a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission 
recommending approval from their meeting of September the 16th, 2014. Some of those conditions uh, reflect what I have just indicated with respect to the business being conducted interior to the space, no outdoor storage, no mechanical work that would be tied to the business owner, Mr. Randy Childers, and tied to the business name, ABC Auto Credit Incorporated. And Mr. Childers is here with us in the audience and would be available to respond to any specific questions that you have. Thank you. We are in a public hearing. I'll ask if there are any proponents at this time. Mr. Childers, do you have anything you would like to say? Uh, well, my name is Randy Childers. Um, this is a uh, indoor uh, storage of vehicles. We do internet sales. We buy specific vehicles, usually high-end Mercedes or specific vehicles that would stand out on the internet. Uh, my background is uh, law enforcement. I was a Dallas police officer, and then I was hired by the Davis Moritz family to uh, operate their dealerships, and I've gone out on my own. I've been out on my own for a while. Uh, and most car sales now, and it, it happens every year, it gets more and more, it's done on the internet. The people know what they want. You have the car they want at the price, they just buy it from you. And we're in an industrial park. It's a real light impact. My footprint is very light. Um, and so I don't think, uh, it, it, nobody would know you. I'm even there unless they know I'm there. And most of the time, a lot of times we're not even there because we're at auction buying and selling overseas and selling out of state. So I chose an industrial park where I'm not around anything. It's all indoor. And like I said, there's no signs. That they know where to come from the ad. And so I, it's a very light impact on the area. The area. Thank you very much, Mr. Childers. Council, do you have any questions for Mr. Childers? I do, have, I do have one question, Mr. Childers. Yes, sir. Um, and I, you've answered a question in PNZ, but obviously when you buy foreign vehicles and what you have there, I believe you say in PNZ, you immediately take those to other auctions. I mean, can you explain that to us? Well, <clears throat> I do a lot of post sailing, and uh, so I buy cars that I know are not, I'm not going to want to retail. I ship them to the auction, and then other buyers buy them there at the auction. And a lot of it's shipped overseas. We do, we do, Texas does a tremendous amount of overseas selling of cars. Mr. Childers, I did have a question for you. One more. Yes, sir. Is this a new location, or is this a, are you going to be moving from another city to this location, or? I had offices here in Utilis, and we're expanding. I had small offices, and we need a bigger space. So. Generally, you know, it's kind of a trend that you try to find a warehouse in an industrial area, because obviously the interior doesn't have to be developed very much except for the offices to park the cars. And it allows you, with the weather in Texas, to be able to sell your cars 365 days a year. If it's raining outside or too cold, most people won't come look at a car. But if it's indoor, it's easy for them to come there and point out the car if they want to drive it, we can open the garage door and blow it out. Yes, sir. We don't have to have hail damage now. That, that is a big deal. Hail damage is, uh, the insurance on hail damage is getting extremely expensive. And, and so now my insurance rates drop because of not having that. We're, we're glad to be in this. We found it to be a good experience dealing with the planning and zoning people there. I've, I've developed these type of deals from Fort Worth to Dallas to Addison. And it was a joy to go in there and say, here's what I'm proposing, here's what I want to do. And everybody just sits down and talks to you like you're one of their neighbors. And uh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. We Thank always you. appreciate hearing kind comments. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask counsel for your pleasure. Mayor, I move approval. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. The motion was made by Councilmember Sinniford and seconded by Councilmember Tompkins. Please cast your votes. The motion passes. Item number 13 is to consider resolution number 14-1441 to declare a vacancy in the office of City Council Member Place 5 and call a special election to fill such a vacancy. 
And I will ask Ms. Bader to brief us on this. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the mayor stated, this uh, resolution would uh, order a special election. The election date would be December the 9th. That is a Tuesday. Uh, and that was, uh, we discussed that with Tarrant County Elections in order to accommodate any runoff elections that may, may result in the November ballot. They would be held on that same day as well. Um, as in past elections, Tarrant County Elections will provide the equipment as well as the election services. Uh, candidate packets are, will be available from my office beginning tomorrow morning. The filing period for this election does begin tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and runs through October 8th at 5 p.m. Uh, early voting will be conducted, it will actually start the Monday prior to Thanksgiving. However, I do want to point out that Thanksgiving Day, or Thanksgiving weekend, there will be no voting that weekend, and then voting will resume the following week and end on the Friday before. All of this information will be published on the city's website as well as, uh, as required, published in the paper. Thank you, Ms. Sutter. Most of you know that we are filling the vacancy of Council Member Glenn Porterfield, who sadly passed away a few weeks ago. He did a wonderful job for the city, and there'll be big shoes to fill. So, Council, any questions or comments? Mayor, just like to have uh, Kim clarify that we're the December 9th date is really we're kind of locked in. There's not a lot of latitude based on state law and state re regulations about when we could have this election. That we couldn't wait till May. We were too late to get into November, so this is really about the only time we can do it. Is that correct? Kim? That is correct. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Motion was made by Council Member Bynum and seconded by Council Member Sinniford. Please cast your votes. We will have an election on December 9th. We now reach the time for public comments. Do we have anyone that would like to make any public comments this evening?